Hi, I'm Oblissi. Hey everyone, today I'm going to teach you how to RNG abuse gift Pokemon in Black and White 2 and Black and White 1. Uh, before I, this gets underway, I'd like to point out there's almost no reason to RNG these Pokemon. Uh, there's nothing really special about them. It's easier to RNG eggs. Um, the only Pokemon I personally think uh, there's any reason to RNG is the ones that come with their hidden abilities, which is the Deerling and the Eevee in Black and White 2. They come with uh, Serene Grace and Anticipation, respectively. Uh, that just makes it easier for breeding. You can start with a great, um, you can start with a great shot at uh, for breeding later. A good parent. But otherwise, if you just want to RNG them for fun or whatever reason, uh, this applies to the starters in both games, the Pan Monkey Trio in Black and White 1. The Zoroa in Black and White 1. Uh, any fossil in either game, when you take it out of the museum, is when you RNG it. Um, the Magikarp Salesman in both games. Uh, the Deerling in Black and White uh, 2 at the Weather Institute, and the Eevee in Castalia City in Black and White 2. Uh, the Happini Egg you get from the Breeder in Nasserine City. Uh, and uh, what I'm doing is the gift Pokemon from Benga, which is either a shiny Dratini or a shiny Gibble, and I'm going for a shiny Gibble. Um, any of these Pokemon can be shiny, uh, and Benga's Pokemon uh, that he gives you are already shiny when you get them, so you don't even have to worry about RNG and their shininess. Um, the only one that is kind of obvious that this you'd think applies to, but it, it doesn't, is the Larvesta Egg. The Larvesta Egg has just a slightly different generation method. That's it. Uh, so you can't you can't use it on the Larvesta egg, and you can't use it on Enzorua in Black and White 2. Um, it just doesn't... Uh, Enz Pokemon, I believe, have all predetermined nature, ability, stats, etc., so you can't RNG it. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, you need the normal prerequisites, which is two chat outs with a recorded chatter. Uh, and you have to save right in front of the person who gives you the Pokemon. So I'm saved in front of Benga. So I'm going to turn my game off, and we're going to go into RNG Reporter. So click Time Finder, 5th generation Time Finder, and here, uh, I'm going to shrink this window a little bit. So here you're going to want to pick every single month. Great. Um, then you're going to want to pick the min and max frame to 1, and under Encounter Type, you're going to want to click Wild, uh, not Wild Pokemon, you're going to want to click big, uh, Gift Pokemon. However, uh, you could click Larvesta Egg if you're doing Larvesta Egg. I believe the method is pretty much the same, it's just the generation works differently under the hood, so you have to click Larvesta Egg if you want to uh, do that. Okay, so then you're going to want to set your stats. I'm going for a Naive Gibble, I want a Mixed Attacker. And uh, if you're going for Shiny Frames, that's what you do. Uh, I'm not because my Pokemon is Shiny, So, but you click here. Um, this stuff you don't have to set because that's determined by PIDRNG. So selecting a nature, an ability, whatever doesn't matter. And half the time, uh, the ability is preset, like any of the um, any of the hidden ability Pokemon you receive. Uh, it's all preset. And the last thing to make sure is make sure you go into your profile and have as many key presses as you can selected. With that out of the way, I'm going to click Generate, and I'll meet you back once uh, I have all of my uh, seeds to pick from. So I found a seed, and uh, now we're just going to right-click, copy seed to clipboard. We're going to scroll down on to Gen 5 PIDRNG. Then we're going to paste our seed here. You're going to want to click uh, the encounter type and click Gift Pokemon, or Larvesta Egg if you're doing Larvesta Egg. Then you want to check if it's black and white one or two. So if it's black and white two, you click this, and if you use Memory Link, you click this. Uh, if it's black and white one and you release your roamer, you check that off. Um, again, normally, if you're going for a shiny, you need your secret ID and your ID, uh, but my shiny is like, it's set, it's going to be shiny already, so I don't have to click that. Uh, and then you click Calculate Initial PID RNG Frame, and then you hit Generate. And now I have to find a nature that I want. So I want a naive nature. So let's see, where is the first one that is appearing? It's frame 64, and I start on frame 43. So that's not bad at all. Okay, so now we're going to go back into the time finder and go into our DS's clock and set the time. So it's going to be the 5th, 2016, and 2.33.27.
A low time too. I like it. I like it. Two, thirty-three, and we go to Eon Timer, and type in whatever time you have. So I have twenty-seven. Okay. So before I hit uh, my DS clock and Eon Timer at the same time, I want to explain something about the starter Pokemon real quick. Uh, obviously, you cannot have a chat out at that point because you can't have any Pokemon and you can't even trade or whatever. Uh, the way you advance the PID frame without chat out is by saving the game. So every single uh, frame here, so like like I said, I want frame 64, which means I have to get to frame 63. So that means I'd have to I'd start here and I would save every single uh, time. And I'd have no way to confirm if I hit the correct seed or not. Uh, in black and white one, it's not a big deal. You'll probably hit the correct uh, timer zero in the seed. But in black and white two, you are going to fluctuate a bit. So it might take some trial and error. But I just want to explain without chat outs, that's how you advance the frame. And this pretty much only applies to the starter Pokemon. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, okay. So with all that out of the way, we're going to want to start Eon Timer and our DS clock at the same time. And wait for Eon Timer to count us down. Um, now keep in mind in black and white two, you're probably going to miss your timer zero a few times. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast. So, yeah. Uh, keep at it. Don't give up if you miss your timer zero a few times. It's not a big deal. Uh, I've even, when I was going for the Eevee in Castellia City, I must have missed it literally like ten times in a row. So when Eon Timer finishes counting, uh, you start the game and hold any key presses you might have. I have to hold A and up, but if you don't have any key presses... Uh, just don't touch anything until the Game Freak logo appears. Which is that. And now we can start the game. And uh, do not use the uh, C gear when you boot your game up. And go straight to your Pokemon menu and see if your chat out pitches line up. Alright, so mine lined up. So, you want to advance to the frame before the uh, nature you want. So, uh, I'd want a naive nature, and I have to advance to frame 63 then. Uh, however, uh, I did this last time. I got it before. I advanced to frame 63, and when I received it, I got a lax nature. So, uh, through some problem solving, that just means I'm going to do two frames before, because it advanced two frames when I received it for some reason. Uh... Simple as that. So normally, uh, if you're going for it, go to the frame before the one you want. Uh, and then you calibrate from there. So, I'm going to receive it from Banga now. <laughs> He's such a ridiculous character. So I do not want to uh, nickname him right now. I'll do that later. And uh, Benga, Benga pieces out. So let's see here. Hopefully it's the correct nature now. And he is naive, so there you go. Uh, so what I what, to explain that in a little further depth, uh, and I'm gonna fly to the. Um, I'm gonna fly to the city to be 100 percent sure his IVs are correct, but I'm almost positive they are. Okay, so what I mean by this is when you're advancing the frames with the chat out, uh, just listening to the chatters, make sure the pitches are aligned. Uh, I want a naive nature, right? So normally, you'd have to advance to the frame beforehand. Uh, you'd have to advance to frame 63 if you want to receive the Pokemon on frame 64. That's just how it does. Uh, however, when I did this uh, in a prior recording, I landed on 63, I received my Gibble, and he was a lax nature Gibble. I don't know why. Uh, that's just how it happened. So... Uh, all that meant was when I received it on frame 63, it jumped to frame 65. So that means when I receive it, uh, it jumps two frames. So I stopped on frame 62 this time. It jumped two frames to frame 64, and I got a naive gibble. It was simple as that. Uh, so that's just some problem solving. If that happens to you, if you receive it, and then it's like clearly a nature, like one past the one you want, just try receiving it a frame earlier or a frame later, however you need to math it out. 
Uh, and let's see my Gibble stats. Outstanding potential, HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, speed. There you go. So we have a perfect six statted Gibble with a naive nature. Unfortunately, this Gibble can only have Sandvale, so he still kind of sucks, but whatever. It's cool anyway. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you guys in the next tutorial.